The ancient Hadzabi tribe in Tanzania may offer the next best thing, a window into Adam's world. As people, the Hadzabi are as modern as any of us. But as a society, they've chosen to retain the lifestyle of the earliest modern humans, the lifestyle of Adam. The Hadzabe are hunter-gatherers. Survival in this environment is an extraordinary challenge. They rely on the kind of ingenuity that Wells believes could have originated with Adam himself. It could almost be Adam's clan preparing for the hunt. The Hadzabe have figured out a way to turn local trees into lethal weaponry. The bows are strong, but flexible. Fire straightens the arrow shafts. They look simple, but when they appeared, they were revolutionary. Weapons that kill at a distance deadly accurate. The Hadzabe set out, just as Adam and his sons may have done, to pit their weapons and their brains against their prey. The Hadzabe's hunting techniques work they had to be invented, developed by someone. Someone with the insight to go beyond the techniques used by the people before. And Wells believes it may have been Adam himself who first showed this intelligence. A culture of innovation is one key to the success of our species. But what amplifies this genius is another unique skill, language. Wells believes Adam may have had a brand new ability to use complex speech. Astonishingly, the Hadzabe could show us how Adam spoke. What? 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 Simba. Simba, lion. They speak one of the most intricate languages on earth. Along with regular consonants, they use a chorus of clicks. Their speech is far more complicated than most modern languages, and that suggests it's been around for much longer. English has around 30 different sounds, Click languages can have over a hundred. <laughs> Scientists believe that when humans first began to speak, they may have used clicks like these. We could be listening to Adam himself. Like the bow and arrow, these sounds are simple. But they may point to what gave Adam his revolutionary intelligence. The Hadzabe have allowed us to explore Adam's world. Now Frank Bender can show us what he might have looked like. His goal is not just to sculpt Adam, but to reveal his personality. I tried to get into his head just like I would a fugitive. Intuition is the binder between art and science. It's the part that pulls it all together and gives it that life, that spark. I picture him very much alive and with a lot of the basic feelings that we have today. Confidence at one point, insecurity at another. Finally, Wells comes face to face with the man he's been searching for. A new portrait of the common ancestor of every man today. Adam. Without a skull, we can't know for sure what Adam looked like. But a combination of genetic evidence, 
Bender's forensic skills, and cutting-edge computer software suggest he looks something like this. Thousands of years after the Bible, and hundreds of years after Michelangelo, we have a whole new face for Adam. I like the expression. He's got a very forceful look. You know, he's intent on something, maybe taking over the world. You, know, you begin to get perhaps an insight into why these guys won out and why this guy's our ancestor. Science can't tell for sure what set Adam apart. There were other men who lived alongside him. But over the centuries, all the other men's lines died out. Maybe some had only daughters, or no children at all. Their Y chromosomes were lost forever. Only Adam's lineage survives. Here's how Adam could have become our ultimate super ancestor. Sometime around 60,000 years ago, Adam is born. He's a fast learner, and in time, he proves himself as a leader of his tribe. His command of language sets him apart. Perhaps he invents new and more lethal weapons. Or takes charge of the hunts, devising new strategies. He's much better than the other guys at providing for his family and the tribe. And this makes him popular with the ladies. He has more children than the others. His sons inherit not just his smarts, but of course his Y chromosome. Like Genghis Khan and his sons, Adam's Y chromosome begins to spread through the population. And Adam's intelligence gives his sons the ability to leave Africa and populate the world. Around 50,000 years ago, we start to expand out of Africa. Some populations start to leave around that time. And very rapidly, they reach places as far afield as Australia, perhaps within a couple of thousand years. A couple of thousand years is like the blink of an eye. And Wells can trace it all back to one scientific atom. This is not the man God creates in the book of Genesis. But now, thousands of years after the Bible was written, science has confirmed the essence of its story. There was one man whose DNA survives in every man on Earth today. His Garden of Eden was likely East Africa. Other humans came before him, but only after him did we become truly modern. Scientific Adam unites all men today. From Bono to Nelson Mandela. From Tiger Woods to David Beckham. From Osama bin Laden to the Dalai Lama. Effectively, we're all members of an extended family. We're all really cousins. And some believe that's the message of Genesis, too. Adam represents all of us, and that's what makes him important. Not Adam individually, but the fact that Adam is every individual. We are all Adam. In finding scientific Adam, the Y chromosome has not just united all men. It has found common ground between the worlds of science and faith.